Hello, everyone. Thank you again for joining us and welcome to this evening's Wheaton Conversation with Carlos Pavan. For those of you who do not know me, I am Pamela Weichman, the Director of Education and Artist Services at Wheaton Arts. I'm a white female in my mid 30s. I have long brown hair and blue eyes. And this evening I'm wearing a green sweater. I acknowledge that I am joining you from Southern New Jersey, traditionally the land of the Lene Lenape. This evening's presentation is part of the Folk Life Center's Reflection and Expressions Project. This project focuses on the cultural heritage of the Central and South American communities in our area through two year multifaceted programming that includes exhibitions, educational activities, artist residencies, conferences, rituals, music, and dance performances. Please plan to visit the two exhibits listed on the screen in person before the closing date of December 31st, 2021. I'd love to hear from those that are new to the series or to Wheaton Arts and how you heard about this evening. Feel free to share that in the chat. I'll be monitoring the chat throughout the program for your technical and general questions. Should you lose connection, please click on your original email, the link in there, and you will be able to rejoin the program. The program this evening is a narrated concert. Carlos will be explaining the musical elements of each piece. Please feel free to type questions um, in the Q&A feature. There will be an intermission halfway through during which Carlos will answer your questions in the order in which they're received. Additionally, there will be a question and answer session at the end of the program. Thank you to our supporters who make free programs like this possible. If you would like to support Wheaton Arts and its programs, I encourage you to become a member, make a donation, or shop at shopwheatonarts.org. Thank you in advance for your support. Thank you to our sponsors, PNC Arts Alive and the Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass for their support. It is now my pleasure to introduce our moderator for this evening, Dr. Iveta Pirgova. Iveta is the director of the Department of Folklife and Cultural Studies at Wheaton Arts. Over the years, Iveta has worked with more than 60 ethnic and regional communities in New Jersey. She's striving to preserve and share their cultural heritage. Iveta has also published two books, over 80 articles, is fluent in five languages, and is active in several professional associations. Iveta, thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Thank you, Pam. This was a beautiful introduction, and I have to admit I'm really, really excited about this evening. It's not only that we, uh, we have um, implemented and we are planning so many exciting programs featuring the cultural heritage of uh, Central and South American people who live in our area, but tonight is actually our first um, virtual concert. So I, I would really appreciate uh, any feedback that uh, anyone in the room uh, has to share with us. Uh, it will help us with the future programs as well. So it is um, my great pleasure uh, to introduce to you uh, such a talented musician and composer, Carlos Pavan. Described with striking music and great originality from renowned classical guitar magazine, Carlos Pavan, he was born in Argentina but lives in New York since um, 2000, is a new wave of modern classical guitar composers, a mix of tradition and influences, versatile and original. He combines tango and folklore rhythms from his native country with jazz harmonies and classical techniques. Carlos is a former student of legendary Jorge Morel, Dave Smee and Pablo Ziegler. Carlos has performed internationally um, visited countries like France, Canada, Portugal, Ireland, Japan, and recorded three albums with his compositions. The, the, the World Music Report um, has a, a nice sentence describing his music. Mr. Pavan worships at the altar of originality while remaining true to his Argentinian roots. At the moment, Carlos is the artistic director, composer, of the Park Slope Chamber Players with a new album released by legendary Centaur Records. In um, his artist statement, Carlos uh, 
shared with us um, uh, these words. Uh, I used a new approach to contemporary classical guitar using my tradition, Argentine tango and folklore, plus influences of American jazz and European masters like Bartok, Debussy and Stravinsky. I'm really, really happy we have Carlos tonight with us. Welcome, Carlos. Hello, everybody, and welcome, my friends. Showtime. Yes? Yes. Begin. I prepared for my new friends in Wheaton Arts, Millville, New Jersey. I did my homework. Yes? A traditional milonga. Milonga is a popular style we have in Argentina and Uruguay inspired by a book also from music i love books and this is about gauchos which is uh, like a latin cowboy we have um, in argentina this is uh, from the 60s it's called dust and fear a great book and this is a milonga with some you will hear the traditional part and then the contemporary influences for my friends at witton arts gracias Thank you very much, my friends from Wheaton. I would like to announce that in order to show you more variety, I will shorten in the pieces. Yeah, some of these pieces, they're very long and very difficult, but since I'm a composer and I saw, I studied jazz, I have the ability to, 
to play a reduction so you can hear more styles from different regions of Argentina. Yes? And now, what else we have in our program? Folklore. Very important for me because folklore is from the north of Argentina where my mother is from. My beautiful mother is from a region called Tucumán, perhaps one of the richest in folklore music. And I would like to share with you a traditional bailecito means little dance. And you will notice the influence of Bolivian indigenous music. Yes? Gracias. <laughs> The things we do for love. To continue, my friends from around Millville, and we have friends from Philadelphia. Wow. Yes. Um, everywhere. I would like to show you some of my classical influences using a song style, very simple, from Argentina. This is a piece that I recorded in my second city in Brooklyn here a few years ago is a lullaby for uh, when my nephew was born. I recorded, composed and recorded this lullaby, which is a prelude with the famous tremolo system, which is quite difficult. And I always blame the humidity, but I'll try my best. In the tremolo system from classical guitar, you have to play very fast the same note with different fingers, like the Russian balalaika or the Italian mandolina. They do it with a pick, but in classical music, you do it with your fingers. Yes, I'll try my best. This is a lullaby from my second city, 
and my new friends from around Melbourne. Gracias. Now it's time for the waltz. Oh yes, I love the old time waltzes. Gracias. My friends, and I would like to um, explain to you how we got the waltzes in South America. There are two types, the European influence, Italian and French, that type of influence in the waltz melody it went into the tango family and the Afro-Peruvian waltz, my favorite because the rhythm is subdivided into little rhythms with accents in the offbeat, so it's richer rhythmically, more tricky, yeah, syncopated. The Afro-Peruvian waltz influence, it went into the folklore family. That's how they separate, yes? And I prepared for you two waltzes with something in the middle let's say yes um the first one is a very very short very simple nothing fancy it's a farewell waltz a little bit sad this is a waltz from my first city that i recorded here in brooklyn you will notice the classical influences very simple very short and it's for my godmother who was a unique bohemian woman the last goodbye El último adiós.
now for the spring waltz using more folklore from perhaps the afro-peruvian influence and uh, this is a piece inspired with a lot of uh, after 20 years of living here in brooklyn my jazz influence i studied exactly and played jazz for 10 years and i still use the harmony and the freedom of to have the ability to improvise. That's why jazz is so good about it, to develop that ability to be spontaneous, yeah? And uh, although now I compose music and I have to write it perfectly, and I send it for publication, publishing the music, my contemporary side, more Stravinsky, Hindemith, but that's a different story. Um, this is a waltz with jazz influences that I studied back in the day, the old masters. John Coltrane, Mal Davis, Thelonious Monk, Charlie Mingus, Charlie Parker, Duke Ellington, yeah? What generation? They don't make it like that anymore. So, my friends, this is a spring waltz with some, a little bit of jazz. Gracias. Thank you very much. I have to keep my Spanish alive. Gracias. Gracias, amigos. Now, my friends, before we get to the tanga, I would like to um, show you some of them. Another folklore rhythm, one of my favorites. Because once again, my mother is from that region, from the north. A lot of influences 
got mixed in the north, Chile, Peru, Bolivia, Uruguay, a little bit of Brazil. All that created this amazing folklore um, and very, with different styles, even like in America. Here we call it provinces in Argentina. Here they call it states, right? And everybody has a different style and a different accent, you know. And um, this is a chacarera, very um, gaucho, macho style, um, upbeat rhythm. And here I would like to talk about, I had the good fortune to study for only shortly for two years with the maestro, wow, Washington, very nice. Um, with the maestro, legendary maestro, Jorge Morel, who helped me a lot with the technique coming from jazz, a different world, the technique and composition, which is very difficult. Yeah, that's why now you don't see many composers. It's difficult. There is no <laughs> economic means, you know what I mean? But you have to do it because you love, and you have to buy a lot of books, a lot of scores, and copy and research. And I took lessons with some of a, a few maestros. I went to the Brooklyn Conservatory. I have to study Bach, counterpoint. I study a little bit of Beethoven music and the Godel Masters, Stravinsky, Bartok, Debussy, Hindemith, and the Americans. Lenny Bernstein, which is buried here in the Brooklyn Cemetery. Uh, Aaron Copland, Samuel Barber, or oh yes, from, from Philadelphia. And um, who else? The American masters, yes. Aaron Copland, Lenny Bernstein, Samuel Barber, all the good old masters. And so going back to the, the folklore, this is a piece showing three generations of Argentine folklore. This, uh, my maestro showed me informally this arrangement. This is 10 years ago. And he used to tell me, Carlos, why don't you add some of your stuff? And that's what exactly what I did. Add some of my stuff. Because this is an arrangement from a very, very, very old melody. So there is three generation, traditional, contemporary, and the next, the future for Argentine folklore. Yes, gracias. <laughs> Oh. 
That's a tough one. Thank you very much. Now, my friends, we have a tiny intermission, and I wonder if we have any questions from the audience. Uh, a question and a request. Yes. Uh, if uh, if uh, you kindly demonstrate and talk about the differences, if any, between traditional Argentine guitar and contemporary Argentine guitar, um, how can you comment on that and if you can give us examples? Yeah, I would like to show you a very simple a traditional piece and then the same with a more contemporary. For example, the milonga. It's a classical, very simple, traditional milonga. And now I will show you something more uh, contemporary. Um, let's see. The harmony is a little bit more dissonant and unpredictable, uneven in the rhythm. And another example from the folklore, very short. This is a traditional folklore piece, for example. And now a contemporary version. harmony has a little bit more jazz and again the rhythm can be uneven. Uh, is it um, uh, a dance music uh, the one which was the traditional example? Or yes, it's it is? played in different style in the folklore and in the tango that I will be playing later. Uh, the milonga is it adapts to both ways. For mm -hmm. example the gauchos outside the big city they played in the folklore way. And in the capital city in Buenos Aires is more refined, more tango-ish, yes? These comparisons are very interesting. And um, uh, I got another question, which uh, it seems to be sent only to me, but it's another question about comparison. What is the difference between uh, the Argentinian tango and other forms of tango that are played and danced in Europe and here in the US. What is specific about the Argentinian tango? And, and again, if you can give uh, short examples, yes. Argentinian tango and another tango. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 the difference is the rhythm. Yeah, the, ryth the, the rhythm is the, for example, when you hear the tango, in for let's call let's say in a bad movie, in a bad movie when you hear the tango very square, very square like a military march that's bad tango that's not Argentine tango. The difference is that the Argentine tango they play more rubato with the tempo so it's very elegant and very subtle. And sometimes they will go longer or shorter. For example, uh, let me go. put the tight rhythm only at the end so the uh -huh. rest, you know the way they dance very elegant you don't move too much too rough that's yes. how you're supposed to play but mm -hmm. when they play it hey, i don't want to make anybody feel bad but hey, when they play it like a military marching 
Chun, 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 chun. That's bad time. That's it. That's the difference. The subtle, elegant rhythm underneath. That's how the people dance. And you're not supposed to be too rough. You're supposed to be like walking. The first thing they teach you when you dance tango is how to walk, isn't it? Mm -hmm. People know you have to walk. You say, no, no, dancing comes later. First, show me how you walk. You have to walk like a cat. Very elegant. <laughs> uh, something like that. And then I don't want to forget the great master, the great new tango master, Astor Piazzolla, who talking about he was uh, he started with the traditionals and then studying classical music and a little bit of jazz. He created a new tango in the late 50s. Mm -hmm. yeah? And it took him many years to be recognized. That's the way it is. Um, but he's the new tango master and the Piazzolla tango is very difficult to play a solo in the guitar. So I don't mess with it. But I studied with Piazzolla's piano player. He was my teacher, composition maestro, Pablo Sigler. And now he must be, wow, maestro must be around 80 now. He's still traveling and playing everywhere. And he's, he lives in New Jersey now. He used to live here in Brooklyn and he moved to New Jersey. Maybe know. one day we can hear you play together. Whew. No, no, he's a master. He has <laughs> his own music, but it was amazing. So that's the new tango Piazzolla that shine in the 70s and the 80s. And now yeah. everybody plays it from the classical guys to the jazz guys. They love the, the Piazzolla beat, which it has a lot of bar talk and one, two, two, one, two, two, jungle, jungle, two, jungle. It sounds like a chasing detective movie, something like that. It's amazing. That's not yeah. a good description, but it's amazing. Yeah, we understand what you mean. I'm sure that we'll hear more tango in the second part of your concert, but uh, there are a few more uh, practical questions that I, I have to, to tell this time. Uh, who is the builder of your guitar? This is a question that came from David Terry. It has such a lovely, beautiful tone and, and we're enjoying uh, your, play, uh, your playing. So who, who made your guitar? This guitar, I have two. This is... My new guitar, about three years old, is from Spain. Yeah, it's very powerful, but it's so sensitive. And I'm still trying to tame her. She's very tough. And when it, with the weather changes, she's very sensitive. So you have to be in control because sometimes you get a lot of basses and it's very sensitive. And, and the guitars, it takes you a few, time, a few years to break them in. Yeah, because this was when I bought it was new. And then I have a German guitar, which is very good, but I, that guitar has been in 10 different countries, so I wore it out. Plus, I hit mm -hmm. the guitar a lot with my folklore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 years doing that, so the German had to go to, to rest. Uh, I see. <laughs> All right. Well, Brenda wants to know, is the neck of your guitar longer than the regular guitar? No, no, this is... Completely. Oh, this is just from the screen? Yeah. Yeah, it could be, I know, for playing difficult things, I put it very vertically, you see? Very vertically, so I can reach better. So just uh, uh, an illusion coming from the screen, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. And uh, Bill May is asking you, when you tap on the body of the instrument, how is it notated? Or is tapping on the body uh, improvisational? Yeah. Uh, Wave. This is a system that I've been developing. I saw the old timers, the old timers doing this, but they always do just a little bit. And I always thought, why did they don't develop it? So I say, what about if I mix it with my jazz and my development? So and this is what I heard. This is what the gaucho dances that I'll be playing later. The gaucho dances with his boots is syncopated rhythm. This is the rhythm that they do. And I added a lot of stuff. And the notation, you put an X. You put the rhythm, tan, taka, taka, tan, and you put Xs. And you have to put percussion, folklore, or golpe, hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way. But people, 
there are many variation in the notation. So it's better to have the X and a verbal description. Mm. I use when I send for publication to Europe, they don't know this, so I have to write everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I suggest that maybe we, we can now continue with the second part okay. and uh, we'll take more questions at, at the end. Okay. Now, my friends, it's tango time. Why not? And I'm going to dedicate these three traditional tangos to my new friend, Miss Fergova. Yes, I get the feeling she must be a very good tango dancer. Yes. Not the Argentinian tango. <laughs> <laughs> the other one. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, my friends, three traditional I prepared for you. You, you will recognize the melody. I would like to say that Keep in mind, I'm not from Buenos Aires. I'm from the second biggest city in Argentina, which is called Cordoba, which is more folklore. That's why my program is more folkloric. But I used to travel to Buenos Aires and I have a lot of friends and it's the capital city. So I'll play three tangos for my friends in, at Wheaton Arts, Millville, New Jersey.
Thank you. Gracias. To continue, my friends, our journey through South America, Argentina, of course. I have prepared for you another one of the most important um, persons, celebrated writer, maestro, Borges, Jorge Luis Borges. His poetry, his stories about from Dante to the Gaucho, yes, gracias. Um, this is a suite that I compose of three parts, but I'll you play I'll play only the middle one. Uh, from the famous book Fictions, 1942. Borges, one of the most famous books because he got, in my personal opinion, the perfect balance. He was very, very clever. So, so time is too much. But in Fictions, 1942, he got this perfect, and he was around my age, early 40s. So he got the perfect balance between knowledge and Argentina and Europe and the Greeks and everything. He mixes everything, but always very, and sometimes in even three pages, he can boom, get to the point. Amazing. Yes, the tango's completely right. Um, this is, uh, I would like to tell you a little bit of the story, but you have to find the book. It's everywhere in English and Spanish. And Spanish. Fictions by Borges. In this story, a gaucho, like a Latin cowboy, is coming very slowly to resolve an issue with another person after seven years. The other guy is waiting. And there is the owner of this cantina bar seeing everything through the window and he sees that something is about to happen. Yes? I don't tell you anymore, so you can't read it. This, call, this the, the, the short story is called The End. Yeah? And I'm using a rhythm from sort of the south of Buenos Aires. So it's like a ritual because everything is slow and there is a lot of land, Patagonia, that kind of thing open spaces, yes?
Next time, hopefully next year in person, I will play the complete suite with all the stories. Yes. Now, my friends, another special rhythm from my first, my third CD, the new one. Um, this is called Carnavalito. Carnavalito is a folklore rhythm with Bolivian influences and some jazz. You will notice um, the influence. I will start very traditional and then I'll go contemporary and I'll come back traditional. Yeah. So it's a mix of tradition plus influences from my third CD that I recorded about two years ago for the legendary Centaur Records from 1977 and still standing, yeah? That was a great recording with my chamber group, more contemporary music, a lot of influences, especially Bartok and Stravinsky and Hindemith that I'm studying a lot of his scores right now. I'm writing a string trio, a wind quintet, very difficult stuff. And, uh, but that's a different, that's for next time, a different story. Yeah, because also composition is about repetition. So everybody wants you to play tango, tango, but you know, you have to keep uh, developing. Repetition is the, the downfall of any artist. That's why you have to, I have to buy a lot of books and keep my knowledge and also good cinema. I'm writing a piece inspired by Bergman, The Hour of the Wolf. Wow, that kind of cinema, that kind of information, culture, not entertainment, not distraction, culture. Yes, books and good cinema and great music. This is a carnavalito. Thank you very much. Gracias. Now, my good friends of Witten, Millville, New Jersey, we have come to the end. But I've saved the best for last. Yes? And uh, my favorite folklore rhythm, Malambo, is very unique. 
because he's the only one that the gaucho, the Latin cowboy, he dances alone. Usually he dances uh, with a couple, right? But in the Malambo, he dances alone, showing off to the lady he, with his fancy boots and steps. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, usually in the summer festivals, you can hear it alongside a lot of wine and empanadas. I sure miss that. Look how skinny I got. Anyway, those were the days, summer festivals, folklore. And this malambo is from the 60s from Maestro Hector Ayala, who had classical guitar technique. And also he was a tango guitarist, the tango orchestras. But he recorded, he composed and notated wonderful music for my generation. And now a lot of musicians are recording his works. And I'm very happy that he, his name is along the great composer in the guitar world. Maestro Hector Ayala, yes. And this is a, a malambo, very short and very traditional. So I took some liberties for my friends to share it with you, yes. Gracias. This is my last piece. And like the song says, we shall meet again some sunny day. Thank you very much, Carlos. It was beautiful, yes, beautiful. I mean, we have uh, uh, such good words people sharing with us in the chat about your uh, beautiful yeah. music. Uh, but uh, if you think that there are no questions, you are gravely mistaken. There are questions. There may be a few more examples that you will need to give us. Okay. Um, so there is a, a question um, from Michael. If you, uh, he's asking you to talk about the relationship between the tango and the Cuban habanera. 
Uh, he said he's read they're related, but if you can just tell us if they are connected musically and if so, how? Yes, this is amazing. Today, I, because I was working and sending a publication which is based on a Habanera from Debussy. Habanera is connected to, it's like some people I heard it once. Habanera is the godmother or the grandmother of tango. So, yes, it developed because the Habanera that you might remember from da, 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 from Carmen Bisset, and the Europeans were using it. But somehow, nobody knows how we, we went from Cuba to Uruguay and Argentina, and it developed also with the violin, more sophisticated, lighter with piano, and it flourished in the 20s in Buenos Aires, 20s and 30s. Yeah, before mm -hmm. rock, before Elvis Presley, this amazing tango orchestra with the classical European sophistication, yet uh, Argentine pure tango with Uruguay, Argentina and Uruguay. So yes, the Habanera is like the godmother, the grandmother. So they're not only related, they're related by blood. Yeah. <laughs> the grandmother of the tango. It's true, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, um, so um, another question is, uh, why is the guitar so important to Argentinian music? It seems to be a yes. kind of central instrument. Uh, do you have any? The guitar was brought by the Spaniards to Argentina and the Argentine culture because it has that kind of longing, melancholic, a sound it got mixed in our culture very well and then for example he came the bandonion which is like a the bandonion was a church a instrument easy to transport in germany with bad weather and snow and the the bandonion came from some they say some drunken sailor pawn it and it got mixed but the sound that velvety distant sound very long in it got mixed into the traditional tango because tango was played with guitar and flute and then it came the piano the violin the bandonion so tango got more elegant more classical mm -hmm. um, but the guitar is assimilated to the gaucho the folkloric thing and it's very we argentinas people say oh you're so sad very melancholic people, you know, like Russian. <laughs> Russian are Russian also very melancholic. So um, um, we have, but we make, we say, we make honey of our suffering, something like that. You know, it's like a poetic, uh, yeah. That's a true artist. You have to make honey out of your misery. Yeah, that is true. Better make music and, and laughter than right. anything else, yes. Yes. So, and uh, because you talked about so many different rhythms. Yeah. Um, so which ones would be, uh, I mean, in your observation, more popular among the Argentinian community here in the US? In the US, uh, you have the old timers, the people who like traditional tango, I'm talking about 20s, 30s, and 40s, that traditional tango. And then you have the new tango, Astor Piazzolla, the master, 60s, 70s, and 80s. He died in the, right, in the 1991. So, and, uh, and then also, a lot of people don't know, but Argentina has a very strong rock culture. And mm. they are very, they say that the best rock without, Outside the British and the American English rock, the best rock is Argentine. They play rock very good. And also in, in Buenos Aires, they like the blues. They play blues and rock. You know, it's a very, like every major city, is very cosmopolitan. So you have influences. You have the Chinese neighborhood. Very like America. Different you places. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. have the Ukrainians. You have the Irish people. You have the Jewish. If you go to Patagonia, there's a lot of Chilean and Dutch. It's a very big country. So, and then you have the Middle Eastern, Syrian, Lebanese in the north, because the weather also is related to the weather. And you know, a lot of mixed 
for example, there is a famous Ukrainian accordion player very mm. historic, that he, he's Ukrainian. He's, he's first generation, I think, born in the north of Argentina, close to Paraguay, very hot weather. And uh, yeah. he plays this and he looks very Ukrainian, you know, and that's... Uh, and, he have, yeah, and he can play tango as well on accordion, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's more folkloric, but yes, he's amazing. Tango yeah. Pasuk, master. All right, then. Uh, and there is a, a question, uh, someone asking, uh, where can, uh, can they access your CDs? Uh, is the information on your website? Because Pam already put it in the chat. Right, yes. It, you can find my CDs in internet everywhere. Very easy to find. Just put my name. But if they go on the website that is in the, yeah. in the chat now, this would be a way to, to do yeah. it. Yeah. All right. And um, will you give us a farewell, old timers tango? Uh -huh. I'd like to play something. This is, oh, you know what? Let's do the, well, if you don't mind, I didn't practice it, but I'll try my best. I would like to show you a little bit of the new tango, the Piazzolla tango, so you can have both. Yeah? Okay, great. I'll show you the traditional. So this is the Piazzolla tango. You will notice a difference in the rhythm. This is from the 60s, early 70s, but I didn't practice it. So, but I used to play it very well. I'll try, I'll try my best. This is a Piazzolla Milonga Tanguish from the 60s. I tried. Thank you. That was, <laughs> was cool. in the list, but I, I used to play it much better. Sorry, but yeah. I'm sure that everyone in the room recognized it, and we are happy to end this yeah. uh, with this uh, tune. It's beautiful. Thank you very much, Carlos. Gracias. Thank you. Well, thank you, Carlos, and thank you, Aveta, and thank you to all who joined us this evening and um, enjoy this beautiful music together. To learn more about Carlos, please visit his website. I put it in the chat. It's carlospavan.info. While earlier we credited the sponsors who directly support our Wheaton Conversation series, we would also like to acknowledge the New Jersey Council for the Humanities, the Cumberland County Cultural and Heritage Commission, the New Jersey State Council on the Arts, and the National Endowment for the Arts for their support of the reflections and expressions Communities and Cultures of Central and South America project. Be sure to visit wheatonarts.org to learn, to learn more about future Wheaton conversations. If you'd like to reference the chat from this evening, feel free to download it or reach out to Marcy Peterson at mpeterson at wheatonarts.org. She will provide you with the text. Thank you all again for spending time with us this evening. Have a good night. <laughs>